Hey guys, uh, Ellen here to talk to you again today about one of my favorite topics in the Revolutionary War, which is influential women. Um, I think it's something that we don't talk about nearly as often as we should, and I think beyond maybe Mercy Otis Warren, Abigail Adams, and Betsy Ross, most people don't know very many names. And to be quite frank with you, before my mom wrote her dissertation on Mercy Otis Warren, I couldn't have named her either. So today, we're going to talk about who I think is the most influential woman in the history of the Revolutionary War, and her name is Mercy Otis Warren, born 14 September 1728. She had no formal education, which was pretty standard for the time. Boys were educated, women were not. Lucky for her, her dad allowed her to sit in on her brother's tutoring sessions with Reverend Jonathan Russell. She would marry James Warren, and they would have five children together. Uh, but that's not the most notable part of her life. The most notable part of her life is that she's a prolific writer during the Revolutionary Era. She writes a lot before the Revolution, a lot during the Revolution, and a lot after the Revolution. But some of her important pieces, like The Adulator and The Defeat, actually go on to be agitating pieces for the Revolution itself. The Adulator, which is probably her most well-known uh, satirical play, which she wrote many, including The Group, The Blockheads, and The Motley Assembly, as well as the two that I already named, um, would go on to paint a picture of a nation called Servia and a uh, tyrannical leader, uh, Rapatio, who would loosely represent Hutchinson and the Boston colonies. Um, and it would essentially go on to talk about how the citizens there were losing their freedom and their rights to this tyrannical leader. And it is a really funny personification of him. Um, but I also think that it leads a lot of the colonists during that period to understand the revolution, uh, to understand the frustration, especially with the taxation and um, a lot of the stuff going on in Boston in a different light. Um, these were written in 1772. Um, the second one would follow on from that. But in reality, that's very early for uh, these, these freedom thoughts to be written. Although they wouldn't be written under her name, like many of her other works would be, um, they did play a key role in the agitation in the early era um, prior to the Revolutionary War. Another one of her really famous uh, poems, I guess, would be uh, one written about the Boston Tea Party. Now, she didn't just write this of her own accord. John Adams actually reached out to her and asked her to write this poem. Um, and in this poem, one of the most notable things that actually isn't really talking about the Boston Tea Party is a section she writes about women, which is, For females have their influence over kings, nor wives nor mistresses were useless things. Enemy to the gods of ancient Homer's page, nor when in weighty matters they engaged, could they neglect the sex's sage advice, and least of all, in any point so nice. Now, this is one of those things that historians oftentimes point to as her being an early advocate for women having a role in society. Now, in her day and age, women oftentimes were kind of relegated to domestic roles, but she oftentimes actually served as an advisor, not only to her husband, but in her correspondence with Abigail Adams and John Adams as a really leading woman in the revolutionary ideas um, and a lot of the writings of the age. She wrote some very f inflammatory things, in fact. Uh, her letters between herself and Abigail Adams go from being very inflammatory before the Declaration of Independence to being somewhat less inflammatory afterwards. And the actual justification that the two of them give is that they're afraid of them being intercepted and potentially being used against them um, in some sort of uh, negative way. Now, her role in the revolution itself is somewhat limited beyond being able to advocate uh, for certain revolutionary ideals and definitely agitating for uh, the actual separation from Great Britain. Her writings during that period actually kind of are, are limited. But uh, following the Revolutionary War, she continues to stay active in politics. She advocates against federalism and against a strong central government, um, which ends up not happening. But in lots of ways, they think that a lot of her writings actually influenced the Bill of Rights uh, to ensure that there was a balance between individual liberty in contrast to the federal government. But more importantly than this, she actually goes on to write one of the very first histories of the Revolutionary War. It's a three-volume series and 1,300 uh, pages. Uh, and it's called A History of the Rise, Progress, ter and Termination of the American Revolution. And what makes it interesting is it's one of the first that's actually written, and it's a first-hand perspective on this war. She focuses a lot more on the social than the battles themselves, but it's an interesting history. Uh, and she's probably the most prolific writer of the age, and regardless of being a woman or not, many of her, s her things would actually become agitators. Um, so I hope you learned something about Mercy Otis Warren. I know she's one of my favorite characters, and I, I hope that after this you guys look into her more. Thanks.